Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the International Euphonium Summit Living History Series. And I'm your host, Nicholas Hopter von Heidi, with our guest for her second in series, Lucy Pankhurst, amazing composer and musician. Welcome back. <laughs> Thank you very much. Awesome. So as we recap kind of the first in series and leaving off relatively to taking your first private lessons on your 13th birthday and <laughs> going into those high school years, that high school age, um, as you put it. And we covered some of that in the podcast where you can find out more information at www.internationaleuphoniumsummit.com slash Lucy Pankhurst, which you can find the spelling to her name right here in the corner of <laughs> each of the windows here. And I really appreciate y'all tuning in today for this really cool segment because we're, you know, we're talking about life, talking about journey and her transition in high school as well as, you know, it's more like a transposing of time during high school because <laughs> uh, that spark kind of was, as we were discussing in this podcast before the video segment here, is that's when we you started learning how to transpose those French horn parts. So take us back to, you know, private lessons, going forward into the high school, and then finding that you had to go into the next town in Warrington for wind band. Let's start there. Yeah, sure. Um, it's, you have to excuse me if I say stuff that I've said before, because I'll probably end up going over some of the same stuff. Um, yeah, so I, I started having lessons at school, 20 minute lesson a week, uh, just out to whatever lesson you were in at school at that time you just had to go and head off down to the music room and it was literally a, a broom cupboard that we had lessons in <laughs> literally uh it's a tiny tiny little room that was probably uh yeah way too small to be playing a brass instrument in but yeah it was great um so after playing for a few months um I started playing in the kind of school ensembles there, there weren't many players in them um but my 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 teacher w w was great he was really um just a really positive influence and um very much kind of seemed to understand how to explain things to me to you know get the best out of me he was a um yeah a really good mentor and he invited me to come along to a band outside of school um which was like in the next town along in Warrington um so it was a wind orchestra um because all of my uh, kind of main ensembles that, that I did, I, I played in quite a lot of different things, but they were all wind things, not brass band, not not purely brass um, at this point anyway. And yeah, so I went along there and was absolutely terrified because yeah. <laughs> they were all uh, really good. And uh, yeah, it it just it was it was quite a shock. Or you know, it seemed like they were all like these are these amazing players, and I hadn't really been playing for that long. Um, but yeah, it it, it was great. So I, I joined that that wind band. But being a tenor horn player, there were no. It, it was a rare occasion if you had a a tenor horn part to play, so you'd have to just transpose the F horn part, which like re re as I was saying earlier on retrospectively is was a really great skill to kind of start developing at that point because although in the you know I was quite uh quite a lot older than maybe a lot of people are when they start to learn an instrument I was still right at the start of my journey at that point as well so um yeah it, that that was a, a really good experience and helped a lot of things later on for me I think and kind of got my brain understanding this idea of transposition and um you know that how 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 different instruments sit in different places within the ensemble and things like, I, I mean in terms of their role not like where they physically sit obviously <laughs> um 
yeah so that 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 was a a, a really great experience um and as i learned I, I think i mentioned last time i started learning to play trombone at one point as well mm -hmm. uh again randomly which seems to be a thing for me um so there was a there was there was two ensembles there was the intermediate band and then the the senior ensemble so i joined the intermediate band on trombone to begin with as well um, and that's when I actually joined a brass band for the first time. Uh, I would have been about 16 at this point. And um, so that was in a, a a few towns along. You had to go over the bridge across the Mersey. So it felt like it was miles away at the time. I teach over that way quite a lot now. So <laughs> it's a, a route, you know, a route that I'm very familiar with now. But at the time, Ooh. miles away. Um so yeah, I joined the Frodsham and Silver Band as well because they had uh they needed a trombone player. Um I didn't play trombone really at that point. I was still learning. Um, but that was great because I had to kind of learn on the job and just get on with it. Uh, which was brill. I had um uh a, a team uh of of trombonists. I had um Bill next to me that I think he must have been in, in his seventies at the time um and norman on the other side of me who again i think he was uh in his 70s as well playing bass trombone on the other side of me um yeah and they were great <laughs> sort of like to you know teaching me the ropes on how, how to do things and things but as, as well as that i was having lessons with my my brass teacher at school on on trombone too um but yeah great just sort of having to learn on the job and as i say just just get on with it just thrown into it and see what happens um but that was my first experience of a brass band and in the grand scheme of things it's not it wasn't um they didn't have a full complement of players um so they um although they, they weren't an what we call a non-contesting band so you know just a community group that that meets up to play it wasn't exactly that because they did do the area contests at that time so that's the um the competitions that help help you qualify to sort of like go to the national finals and things like that um but they whenever we did them i think i did two area competitions with them and we didn't have a full band either time wow. uh so they were yeah bless them but they were the you know the heart was absolutely in it and that yeah so they, they were a fourth section band the bottom of the fourth section um which is um so like the the way things are sort of a bit like wind band grading i suppose it's a similar sort of thing but for competitions the brass bands are all are placed in different sections so that you are well hopefully um competing against bands of around this the same sort of um you know standard and ability um so we have championship at the top and then it goes down first second third fourth and fourth section bands are um quite often sort of more like you know community groups that that a collection of people that do it because they love playing um whereas the championship section you know it's more kind of a professional level um um or certainly you know higher sort of uh technical ability i suppose right. and um yeah so th this fourth section band i was in was um mainly well a, a lot of sort of re retired people um and mainly all uh, a, a, a lot of the players were all from one family that were keeping it going and that family's still associated with the band now which i think is lovely uh so it's it's still running and you know that they're still going and they also had um some of them would teach um younger players to try and you know eventually get them into the band and things and um yeah it was lovely and I didn't have lessons there personally. I, I just sort of came to rehearsals to, um, to do my thing. Um, but because we didn't have a full band, um, I'd quite often just end up playing, get, get an instrument out of the cupboard and play it. You know, wherever there was a gap, I'd go and plug it. <laughs> so yeah, sometimes I'd play horn, which you know was fine because that was my my instrument. Um. Or I might do a bit of flugel. I think I had to go at bass once, which was great fun. Um, so yeah, I'd just fill in whatever needed filling in, and it didn't occur to me that it was I shouldn't be doing it. Or <laughs> it was it was a strange thing to do, but yeah, it was it was great fun. A uh, lovely group. 
Um, but that was my first kind of, that's what I thought a brass band was like. And I didn't, because there, there's nothing else in the area around here that, 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 that was it at that point. And it was only until I went to music college, like for at 18, that I realised it wasn't all all like that. You know, there was a, a whole other world out there. Um, I did actually, for a couple of years, I joined the Cheshire Youth Brass Band, which is a, a bigger regional thing. Um, so players from, um, young young players, sort of school age from all across uh, Cheshire in the Northwest. Um, and that was a little bit more sort of advanced than things, but um, I did... Um, I, th I think I enjoyed it. I'm not sure if that's the right word. <laughs> uh, I was just, I kind of just got lost in the middle of it. You know, it, it it didn't particularly push me. It was exciting to play in a really big band. And some of the music we did was quite cool. Um, and we did a, a concert every year um, with um, Brighouse and Rastrick. Used to sort of like be do half the concert with us so you know that that was great because that was the first time i'd ever heard a band like that um but yeah okay very so... uh different experience for me really and yeah i just i just kind of floated along in the middle and didn't i wasn't pushed and because i wasn't no like hey look at me listen to what i can do um i just kind of yeah i just nothing much happened for me there um you know, it was it was fine, uh, but yeah, <laughs> okay. So it just sort of happened, and, and it was nice, and that was it. You brought up a point in our podcast segment that's a joint. You can find out more information. Sorry, excuse me. That's fine. International Euphonium Summit dot com slash uh, Lucy dash Pinkhurst uh, for more information on those podcast segments that will be listed there and. Uh, in the links below, as well as that website. Uh, you did mention that in joining the brass band at 16, you had to drive 40 mile, forty minutes away to Frodsham Silver Band, and your your dad had to get off from work and pick you up, take you out there, and did he sit in those rehearsals and listen to the band at all, or did he stay in the car? Uh, what kind of feedback it, it, did you get? It was a mixture of things, so he, he wouldn't um he wouldn't usually come in and listen, um sometimes depending, um, what sort of what what days and times he was working, he could he'd either have to drop me off and I'd have to get a lift home, or sometimes I'd get a lift there with someone and then he'd come and pick me up, you know things like that. But yeah, quite often, certainly with my when I got a little bit older and I wasn't in school anymore, I was in sixth form college, um I, we had to go to um you know my teacher's house for a lesson um so yeah we poor dad just have to sit there and <laughs> wait for me uh bless him so uh, how, yeah so so yeah. how was it like <laughs> when you first when you began to just fall in with playing trombone how did how was it at the home side when you brought that trombone for the first time at the house it was fine i was i think i said last week i, I was banished to the bathroom to practice that one mm -hmm. uh because it it was loud apparently that's right it didn't feel any different to me <laughs> uh, yeah so i didn't mind practicing in the bathroom because the acoustics better in there it was good um but uh and and i had a mute as well um for for that one which was 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 quite exciting because like you couldn't at that point you couldn't really get many horn mutes, so you know I've got a I can have a mute, I've got a trombone, so that 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 was quite good. Um, but yeah, it it was fine. I think be because uh, you know, at that point, um, my mum and dad knew that I was, I was, you know, quite serious about it, and it was kind of my thing. Um, and I could get a tune out of it pretty much straight away so it wasn't like oh for goodness sake what's she doing now you know it's you just I, when I started playing that I'd already done like my grade eight on on horn so I was I, I already had that kind of knowledge so I was um I just transferred it um and 
kind of went with it but yeah th- so that it, it was fine it was just a, a case of sort of learning you know the the differences in technique and things like that and learning how, how on earth the slide works the mystery that is the trombone slide so did um, you ever take those tests for for that system that you'll have over there did you take tests on trombone as well or just the tenor horn trombone as well so yeah the abrsm exams i did so um i did so before i went off to music college i did um my 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 grade eight for horn when i was about 16 and then um just before i went off to music college it must have been about uh 17 18 when did it on trombone um what were your solos but yeah Oh, crikey. Uh, <laughs> that, that was off the fly, so I don't expect you to... Maybe next time... No, I can go. remember them. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, the, the the horn ones, at the time, I've, having said this, some of these pieces have only just gone off the, like the, the you know, the, the, the syllabus for the possible pieces to, to choose from. Um, there weren't many to choose from at, at this point, um, but, oh, yeah, I played, uh, yeah, not a lot at all. Um, so I played variations on a Welsh theme. So any tenor horn players out there will know exactly what that piece is. Uh, so yeah, I played that one. Um, something out of the Arben for my own accompanied piece. I'm trying to think what the other piece was. I think it might have been. Um, I think it was a Roy Newsom arrangement of um, an oboe concerto. It was a yeah strange kind of choice but it works really well because you know because of the the range of the oboe um as long as it doesn't go too <laughs> too high above the stave it actually sits fairly fairly nicely um for sort of three valve brass um yeah so I played those and then uh I'm trying to think what I did for the trombone um yeah it was was quite a while ago going back now. Um I think possibly more so symphonique. Uh unless that was grade seven. I did them like in quick succession, so I, I can't quite remember now. Uh and some of the Rimsky Korsakov concerto. Um yeah. Piece called uh I think no that that was grade seven. I was gonna say a piece called Dances with Bears that was always quite quite good fun. Um yeah. <laughs> that's really cool. so it yeah it's um it was it was great fun i just just loved playing so um the the exams were kind of um i was never very good at them so i never played my best uh at them and um as i had absolutely crippling performance anxiety um that I only really sorted out towards the end of my undergrad. Uh, it was quite horrific, quite debilitating. Um, and yeah, and I, I passed all all the exams, but I, I, you know these ABRSM performance things. But um, yeah, I never got amazing marks in them because I just didn't quite go to pieces. But I never played my best. Um, but uh, it was it was just a you know. Did a way parents, to, um, did, sorry. Did your parents ever provide you any kind of support with those performance anxieties before those, um, kind of recitalish types of, uh, for your grade eight, your grade seven, uh, where you you went to go play? Um, that they were as you know they were always supportive of of everything, but be, because I was the only musician in the family, um. We, they didn't know, you know, specific ways to help really. Um, as I say, my my um ten horn and trombone teacher was 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 great um for helping with things, but it was um it's just the way my brain works. It's it it's still there. I've just got ways to combat it now. You know, um, I think doing a music performance degree is like that's the main thing I got out of it. <laughs> um. But yeah, so the, I mean, they they helped work wherever they could, but they, they, it's just it's not um, it's so specific, you know the the kind of problems that that musicians have with things like that that 
unless you've you've done that it's not it's not really possible to help is it other than you know letting people know that you're there and that, that you care and it doesn't matter at the end of the day if you pass that exam or not and um but you know when you when you're 16 and that that's all that matters at that point you don't really want to hear that <laughs> okay. um but yeah they, they were super supportive but in terms of like the performance anxiety and things it was um the, the but the, the, the yeah that they helped as as much as they could but it was um not something i think that they they would be able to deal with just on their own i know it was awful hard for my mum um because she's we're quite similar in that respect so she sort of like she absolutely felt the pain that I was going through but didn't know how to help um so that was quite frustrating and uh you know painful for her to go through so I, I do I, it makes me really sad to think of that really um but uh it was yeah it just kind of had to push through it and <laughs> So uh, and just get on with it again. <laughs> so the reflection on that and to provide as we are, we're wrapping up this, the kind of the high school years, as we would call it here stateside <laughs> and moving forward in those passing off the grades for those that are um, that have the ADR system in place. What advice would you give the parents to support their students that are doing these um, tests or even preparing for their college entrance um, solos? Uh, what kind of advice would you give the parent and in reflection, in retrospect, and for the student perhaps? I think the, the main thing to remember is just that from an examiner's point of view, um, a few wrong notes don't matter you know that they're not looking for perfection they're looking for the best version of yourself that you can give and even if that turns out to not be your absolute best on the day you've you, you've done what you can and you know you just need to remember it's something I, I quite often tell my my students it's just to remind them you know you like playing your instrument <laughs> just just remember that this isn't you know this isn't a punishment you're, you're doing this because you actually enjoy it remember that and try your best to enjoy your performance um it's so easy to just get fixated on right notes and getting to the end um without thinking of the performance as a whole and enjoying the experience because you know the likelihood is some of these pieces you'll after you've done the exam you'll never play it again and it all almost becomes, I, I feel the same thing when I'm writing a new piece of music. It's like you, you're so close with it. And then all of a sudden it's just gone. And it's like, it's it's a, it's a bit dramatic that, isn't it? Sorry, but it's like, you know, it's, it's a part of your life that you, is, is gone. It's like a mo moment in time that you kind of, you lose. So whilst you've got that moment, keep hold of it and enjoy page. it sort of thing, you know? Yeah. Um and yeah, for, for for parents, it's just that even if it's not something that you have, um, you know, first hand experience of, um, if, yeah, I, I suppose it's just you know try 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 not to be dismissive of anything of you know how how your kids might be feeling about something, but just to in, encourage them to not fixate on the negative, because that that's not what the examiners are looking for they want you to pass you know they they want you to do your best and if all you're thinking is oh flipping heck I didn't do that b flat you know or some or my thing was there was a high b flat right at the end of the piece speaking of b flat um and I just fixate on it so for like the entire section at least well at least half of the piece my teacher would say you're thinking about that b flat aren't you <laughs> all kinds I've been knocking things all over the place and you'd be like you know what what's going on and in in, in you I was thinking about like that second to last bar with the b flat in it because um high note because I was so tense and anxious you know high notes were never my thing at that point um and yeah so it's just to, to not fixate and enjoy the performance as a whole um and yeah just to sort of support them and maybe point out that you know this this is this is something that you enjoy doing so just enjoy it don't don't fixate on the wrong thing I don't know Absolutely. if that, that is helpful at all, but <laughs> it is. 
I, I think it is. And if it is for you, uh, definitely uh, find out more about uh, Lucy Pankhurst on uh, internationallyfundingsummit.com slash Lucy dash Pankhurst and uh, find out the compositions that she's written for Euphonium as well as other uh, instrumentation and uh, how you can get a hold of her. Leave a comment below um, if you've found this helpful and share this out with uh, your local music programs or a friend who really needs to hear that or even a parent. Um, that really wraps this up well with the perspective of your transitioning into college life and ramping up how how you prepared your mindset going into that new that next stage of life um, and getting to understand your thought processes and as as well as the process that you had to go through and those across the pond to understand the grading system, the ABR system, how it relates to getting into college. And for those that are interested in, that are stateside, that want to pursue, especially a degree at the, the Royal Northern College of Music um, or anywhere else in the UK or Europe in general, um, and how that could facilitate. I really appreciate your time. And for those that are watching, thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to be part of this series. And if it's just watching, or if this has inspired you to share your own journey uh, and you have something slightly different because everyone is different. Everyone has a story, everyone is valuable and every story is such. We'd love to have you share your journey on the Living History series. Feel free to reach out and to get that started. Until next time, everyone, join us for our third in series with Lucy Pankhurst next time. Thanks, everyone.